Joining us on the program now, we welcome back healthy living expert Judy Gammon. Judy, thank you for uh, joining us once again. How are you? I'm great, and it's always a pleasure to join you, Tim. Joy, uh, uh, Judy, you know, uh, here we are. We're on the radio, so I guess I better tread lightly since we deal with audio here. But uh, now I guess uh, now the World Health Organization is talking about how noise can adversely affect quality of life and health. Well, this is a great thing to talk about because it's happening at all ages, and we don't really think a lot about it. I was just at a stoplight yesterday, and there was a car next to me, and it was so loud I could hear my windows rep every word to the song, and I thought, golly, they don't realize what they're doing to their ears, and it was maybe somebody 20, and boy, when they're 65, they're going to regret this, I guarantee it. But short-term exposure to loud sounds can cause a lot of problems like sleep disturbance, stress, anxiety, and we don't think about that. And when I say short-term exposure, so maybe you, you go out to a concert and you're not usually a concert goer, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. It's, it's an occasional um, exposure to that kind of sleep, but long-term is really bad. So it increases actually the the risk of ischemic heart disease. Now what that means is when you have ischemic heart disease, it means your heart's not getting enough blood. So just think about that. Your Oof. heart's a muscle. It needs that. Yeah. And then cognitive impairment, even in kids. So these kids that are being exposed to a lot of noise, even in their headphones and however, it may affect the way they do it, their schoolwork. So we got to pay attention as parents. And then everybody, of course, is related to stress, mental illness, and ringing in the ears, which may or may not go away. So we got to pay attention to, to the hearing, and we got to pay attention to the loud noises, and how much are we really exposing ourselves? Judy Gammon joining us on Memphis Morning News, and you mentioned uh, kids, kids with headphones, and I see that more and more, but I've noticed online and in stores that they now have um, noise and volume limiting headphones for for kids do those things do those things really work and, and, and are they actually better that's like kind of that's like saying something is a diet soda but it's still you know basically got the equivalent of some sort of a poison in there well obviously the first thing is to avoid that kind of loud noise sure but we do notice that kids that are basically autistic, they do really well on these noise-canceling headphones because they are even more prone to the stress and the anxiety from noise. Think about it when you're on an international flight and that constant noise. If you use those headphones, which um, especially up in first class are noise-canceling, then you, when you take them off, you really notice. But if you don't use them, you don't even realize until you get off the plane golly, I, I feel like I've been to a rock concert. So sometimes we cannot even appreciate the noise that we're being exposed to until we're away from it. But if you think about noise and you think about what we listen to, it, noise is measured in decibels. So going outside and just hearing like the sounds of nature, that's about 20 decibels. You don't want to lose that. That's really the peaceful sounds. Just quiet conversation, just talking to somebody is about 40. And then traffic can be about 80. And then you get into things like nightclubs, and that's about 120. Why does this matter? Because they've measured what's safe and what's not. So if you keep those decibels under 70, you're pretty much safe. You're not going to have any hearing loss. You get to 100 or greater, after about 14 minutes, you can actually do some hearing damage. But if you have immediate exposure to something over 130, so sometimes that's shooting a gun, it's being by a jet engine, um, even, even some of these nightclubs are going to Zumba class and they crank it up too loud, you can get a damage from that just with immediate exposure. So we're not talking about you have to be out there in a job in a factory your whole life it's these little things we got to pay attention to it's funny you mention that because at the gym I go, I go to they have some some of those exercise classes and that music is just just blasting through the walls out of the studio and I'm waiting for the day when it just gets so loud and some of the some of the students and people that go in there are older and they have some of the they have some of the uh, those ear those those big earmuffs that you wear out on the tarmac so that they can go exercise and not uh, you know get a headache after the fact I, I, I now that you mentioned that I, I have noticed that some of that music gets a little bit loud. I guess it, it inspires and drives people more because I'm sure, you know, I've been guilty of cranking up that, that uh, music at the gym when, when on the treadmill too. I mean, I, 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 I don't think that's uncommon at all. 
Well, I, I would like to see us go into gyms and regulate, especially the dance classes and, and spin classes and things like that, the the loud the amount of decibels they can play and you know, the loudness of the music because people, once you get in there and they kind of get used to the sound, they may not realize that they're actually damaging their ears. And that same thing has kind of happened to me. I went to Zumba. I started saying, gosh, I get out. I feel like I've been to a concert. So I started using those little orange earplugs and, and going, I thought, this is crazy. I had to plug my ears to, to go into a class I'm paying for. So we really should talk to these gyms. Somebody should, or we should regulate them in some way. Mm-hmm. Or if, you know, you're listening right now, be empowered to talk to your gym and say, hey, you know what, I like your class, but the music's just too loud and I don't want to have damage to my ears. And it's okay to speak up for yourself. We all need to be able to be our own health advocates. Yeah, I, 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 that's a, that's that's true because if you pay a membership, then you're not just – you're not just somebody that I mean you are you are a client so absolutely I think it, it, having some sort of a voice is a great idea Judy my producer Sherry just looked at me and and sent me a note that said while while, while volume and decibels is is one of the biggest threats in the gym she said the second biggest threat is if I show up in yoga pants and I, I will not do I will not do that Sherry no, I love her. No, 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 no yoga pants. There, there's so many, th- there's so many laws that could be broken if I did that. And so, no, the saggy pants law, of course, is not. It's not meant for middle-aged guys, but it would occur in this case. Judy Gammon, always a pleasure. Thank you for uh, bringing guys some of this down to the practical level that uh, we can all relate to, and hope to talk to you again really, really soon. And uh, have yourself a great week. You too.